Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Home Assistant installation process. We're going to try to do it as quick as possible. It is pretty straightforward, but for those that are not familiar with this process, I figured it is something worth covering. So we're going to install this on our Windows machine, actually uh, more specifically within a, our Hyper-V environment. So it will be a virtualized environment. Uh, there's plenty of options, uh, which we could cover in the future, such as the Raspberry Pi, or even here locally on the Windows machine without using Hyper-V. Um, but with that being said, that's what we are going to do today. If you have any questions or if you would like any variations of this tutorial, just let me know in the comments below. But with that, the very first step is going to go head over to home-assistant.io slash installation slash windows. So the, this step is not necessary as I'm going to cover all these steps and you can just follow along. But if any changes happen in the future, I would suggest referencing this uh, documentation provided by Home Assistant. Obviously, changes are being made all the time. So once you're over here, for our example, we're going to go ahead and download the appropriate image. So we're going to go ahead and download Hyper-V. And that's going to be the VHDX file, which we will explain in just a minute. Uh, and then it kind of goes over exactly what you should do. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and decompress that image and unzip it. Um, talks about the minimum recommended assignments or minimum recommended specs. Uh, in this case, we need two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and two virtual CPUs. Obviously, all of these can be extended if our usage calls for more resources. So um, looking at it from a dynamic perspective, if later on we add continue to add more resources and it continues to bog down our home assistant, obviously we can adjust this and um, go from there. But at the very minimum, this is what we will need. And if you go down to the hypervisor specific configuration, uh, depending on the different environments that you are going to install this on, you have pretty good instructions. In our case, we only have four steps uh, that are necessary uh, here uh, within Hyper-V. So as you can see here, Hyper-V does not support USB. So we're just going to create a new virtual machine. we got to make sure we select gen Generation 2 as this will enable the option for the or by default, it would be U, uh, EFI. You need that in order to go into, in order to the boot into the image. And then you're gonna select your network. You're gonna select a virtual, existing virtual hard disk. And that's gonna be the, the one that you download here. And then at the very end, which it doesn't say, um, it should just be step five, but it says after creation, go to settings, security, and deselect the enable secure boot. If you do not do any of these steps, um, more specifically, if you do not select gen Generation 2, you will not be able to do this, um, and therefore you will not be able to boot into the image. All right, so for that next step, you're going to go over to the right side after opening up Hyper-V. Go to the right side and click on New, and then you're going to click on Virtual Machine. That's going to bring up the prompt in order to create this virtual machine or the wizard. Go ahead click Next. We're going to name this HA. Something simple. Uh, I already have Home Assistant running, obviously, as you can see up here. Uh, but in this case, we want to provide a fresh state for those that are going to, going to watch this tutorial. Click Next. As I explained in the steps from the documentation, go ahead and click Generation 2. Here, uh, you needed 2 gigabytes of RAM. So go ahead and put in 24 or 2048 megabytes or anything greater than that. Networking. Go ahead and select whatever network is relevant for you. Uh, in my case, I have it set up where external network is the current LAN that I'm going to be using in order, in order to connect to this uh, virtual machine. Um, but this is going to change in the future, which I will get another video out there, uh, as I do suggest getting a separate VLAN and a separate network entirely altogether, allowing you to separate IoT devices from your main environment or your main network to prevent any... Um, intrusions or any you know viruses getting out into your actual network uh, so after that go ahead and click your network that you want to connect to and then here you're going to go ahead and select use an existing virtual hard disk and i'll just go ahead and get that here now all right so once we have our virtual or the vhdx file as our existing existing virtual hard disk go ahead and click next and then we're just going to click finish So once that is done, you're going to go back into the settings of that example that we had just picked. And then you're going to go over to security and you're going to turn off enable secure boot. So at this point, we should be able to go ahead and right click our example, hit start. 
and then you can either double click or right click and hit connect and we'll just kind of wait for this to boot up all right so at this point once the installation process has been completed or the image has been able to boot up you will get brought to the screen here and this will provide you with the ip address and the dns name or the url with the dns name and the port one thing i want to point out for me is or if you are in a similar situation if you already have home assistant running and you already might have this uh, domain name or the dns name assigned along with this port number assigned to a home assistant instance you will not be able to use that to get to this one um, mine's kind of a little bit different i'm also using my I hold DNS server to create a DNS record for ha.local, which will point me to this IP address on my other instance at uh, port 8123. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead over to 192.168.1.195 on port 8123, and we should be able to access the home assistant UI. All right, so as you can see, once I head over to the IP address followed by the port number, it will automatically bring us to the onboarding HTML page. And in here, we're going to go ahead and create our smart home. And we'll just kind of put some information here and we'll just skip over. Uh, once you are complete with this, just go ahead and click on create account. All right, so I just fill in our name, username, cyber me. And then I just put in a password, click create account. You can put whatever you want here. Just go ahead and um, I don't know what it is. We'll just do California. Maybe something will pop up. We'll do Texas. Texas is pretty cool, right? There we go. Just do Texas. Um, and it tells you what it's for. Obviously, set, let's set up a location of your home so that you can display information such as local weather and use sun-based or presence-based automations. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Go ahead and click Next. Obviously, this may pertain to you um, or may not. And then here you got some other things that you could obviously opt in for or opt out of. I generally opt out of all this stuff. And then you go ahead and click on finish. Uh, and then it tells you here, maybe it finds some devices on the local network saying it's compatible. Not really relevant. Great. So at this point now we are logged into our home assistant and we are able to see our overview page. In this tutorial, we're not going to go much further, but I do uh, suggest you do one more thing, especially um, for those that are trying to maintain a um, persistent network. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that if you want to um, maybe use a DNS name, like I said, ha.local, to get to the home assistant page, you will want to have a static IP address. Um, so to do so, just go ahead and go to settings, go to system, and then you're going to find network tab, click on network, and then go ahead and click on configure network interfaces for IPv4. Now let's go ahead and sign a static IP address. Now we can just leave this by default, uh, which we will do because 195 is fine. And it's, it meets my, my requirements for my network. And this is the subnet mask and that's great. Here's the, get, the gateway address and the DNS server. But it says right here, if you're changing the Wi-Fi or IP or gateway address, you might lose the connection. So obviously this is important to keep in mind. Um, with that being said, before I forget, uh, I kind of explained it earlier, but within the, let me bring it up real quick. Within your Hyper-V, when you're setting this up and you select that network, although I briefly touched upon it, make sure that you're selecting a network. Uh, this can be obviously be changed, so it's not too big of a deal. Now uh, make sure you're selecting a network that your current um, operating or your host machine is able to access. So if I put this on maybe default switch or I think these are both able to be accessed actually but if I had another network or even not connected I won't be able to connect to via the web browser to the UI so just keep that in mind but this is a good point so if you change this to a, an IP address outside of maybe a subnet that you are not routed to so if you do like 192.168.2.195 um, and our network our subnet is only allocated for the 192.168.1 subnet then you will not be able to access this and i believe you can still change it through the ssh or through the um, console but that is not something that i've done before uh, so in this case all you got to do is just set that static ip and then go ahead and click save 
and that's it. So now we have a static IP. So we, now we can ensure uh, now we could be sure that every time that we log on, regardless if we restart our environment, we should be able to get to 192.168.1.195 at port 8123. We should be able to get to Home Assistant. And that's going to close out today's video for the Home, ins home Assistant installation process. We had done this on a Windows. As I said, there's numerous ways to get this done. Um, we are just getting Home Assistant spun up more and more in our environment here at the house. Uh, so this is definitely something that I want to be covering going forward. Uh, I have a few already have a few stuff that's already in place and I'm going to continue building upon that and I hope to cover that in future tutorials. But for the next video, we're going to go ahead and install the Home Assistant Community Store. Uh, and that allows you to just download software and plugins that's not in the standard Home Assistant repository. So that's pretty cool, just pretty much third party, third party plugins. And that's going to be on the next video. So with that being said, I hope you were able to take something away. If you enjoy home automation, scripting, and anything to that nature, definitely be sure to subscribe as we will be continuing to drop more videos just like that. And as always, never stop learning.